powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Janelle Slade. Today's snowfall undoing all the shoveling, plowing and de-icing from the past day. And as it continues coming down, coating streets, cars and walkways, a winter wonderland with some less than wonderful driving conditions out there. Well, it's a bit behind schedule, but it finally looks like winter here in Montana. That snow falling across the city stacked on top of Monday's six inches. In turn, also covering up ice and slush, making for slippery, messy driving conditions today. And once again, bundled up homeowners and business owners armed with shovels and snowblowers are forced to clear their walkways. The conditions also impacting crews trying to repair a water main break on the south side of Laurel. Crews are working hard to get the water restored, but no word on when that will happen. And we just received word that about 1,700 people are without power in Carbon County in the Belfry and Red Lodge areas. And tonight as commuters are beginning to leave work, it's an important reminder to take your time and allow plenty of space. City crews working 12-hour shifts will have more than 20 plows clearing streets tonight. All right, we're joined now by Q2's Rob Griggs, who has some important information on our travel conditions. Rob? Yeah, Russ, Janelle, first of all, this is standard operating equipment. If you're going to be out here tonight, Q2 Chief Photographer Paul Humphrey brought this shovel along in the Q2 News Rig, and it's already kind of come in handy. It's a heavy, wet snow, and the dynamic's different from Monday because it's an evening snow, so the commute home was much different than this morning's commute. Now, ironically, uh, city uh, plows are out there taking care of the streets even as we speak. If you go to the Facebook page, the city has a City Public Works Facebook page that will show the entire map of the city, all six zones, and they'll show you where they've started the plowing process working clockwise throughout the city. The good news is every storm that we get, they start in a different zone, so everybody gets to be first at some point. But the idea is to take it slow and be patient with one another. We also have alternate school bus stops tomorrow in effect, uh, but this is a very slippery, dangerous street out here tonight on uh, Lewis Avenue and 8th. We've already had a couple of vehicles get stuck. We've been pushing some trucks out of here, believe it or not. Just take your time as you move around the streets are pretty bad right now and they're going to be that way through the night and into the morning now as to the source of this storm we go to q2's weather center bob mcguire on hand to give us all the details bob well, thank you very much rob four inches that's the story that's the official measurement at the billings airport and strangely enough four inches of snow over at red lodge mountain right now and the snow continues to come down take a look at this you can see it here the snow continues to linger across south central montana including the billings area and when we pull back there's another batch of snow between great falls lewiston and glass Glasgow, that's also going to come our way because look at this. We've got another cold front dropping down from Canada. It's going to grab that snow to the north and pull it right on down through the Billings area. Now we have an upslope flow over at Red Lodge Mountain. That means it enhances the snow flow. So even though they've only had four inches now, they could see it maybe 10 to 15 inches of snow by the time this thing's out of here. Take a look. This is what our threat board is showing. Wind chill factors up in the northeast corner of the state to 25 below zero. Here in the Billings area, you're going to see two to four inches of snow already at four. And over in Red Lodge Mountain, they could see 10 to 15 inches of snow out of this thing. Same thing in the Beartooth. And so the big snow hasn't hit the mountain yet, but it's on its way because we are expecting that upslope flow along with a new cold front. Now let's go back to Janelle and Russ. All right, thanks, Bob. Tonight, more reaction from the University of Montana as well as Montana Grizzly Athletics as fans and students mourn the loss of a senior player. 22-year-old Andrew Harris is believed to have committed suicide Tuesday. Harris was a graduate of Glacier High School in Kalispell and led the Wolfpack to a 2014 state football championship. He earned a spot with the Montana Grizzlies playing last year under leadership of coach Bobby Houck. And today, his family, friends, teammates, and Grizz Nation are all mourning his loss. Coach Houck released a statement today saying the Grizzly family will continue to mourn the passing of Andrew Harris, but right now our primary concern is for his immediate family, their well-being and their privacy. Grizzly Athletics announced today there will be a moment of silence for Harris tomorrow night before the UM basketball game. Today, coaches and administrators from across the country reached out and sent notes of condolence to Montana and the Harris family. Now, UM has made a number of resources available to all students and staff who need counseling during this tough time. Resources are also available here in Billings. Yeah, this week, MSUB has been focused on addressing suicide prevention and support for people who need help. Q2's David J joins us with more on what's available at MSUB. David? All right, uh, Janella, MSUB uh, Student Health Services has help for students dealing with mental health issues. The office has insight into mental health from surveying students on what impedes them from doing well academically. 
Every year the top five is stress, um, anxiety, depression, work. So in other words, trying to balance work and going to school and home life, um, and then sleep. We know from our data that most of our students aren't getting enough sleep, um, and that can really set you up for mental health issues, including depression. And mental health counseling is available to students at MSUB Student Health Services. Some of that is available on the website at msubillings.edu. If other students have concerns, uh, there is help at See Something, Say Something. There are also uh, pages for student health and suicide prevention. These are resources available to MSUB students. Darla Tyler uh, McSherry says for those uh, not attending MSUB, a good place for information is the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. Russ? All right, thank you, David. As the U.S. government shutdown enters day 33, furloughed workers continue to struggle with no paycheck in sight. But Billings is stepping up by collecting food for those impacted by the shutdown, and you can help out as well. Rachel Court is asking for non-perishable items to help furloughed families fill their empty cupboards. It's, it's so frightening for families, I think, because they, other than food, they have insurance to pay for, car payments to pay for, mortgages to cover, um, there's just there's so many things and oftentimes food your nutrition gets put on the, um, the back burner and when you're buying things like diapers and medications and uh, other things that are very necessary. Well, this is how you can help. You can bring dried or canned food to the drop-off locations you see there on your screen. One is at the Coldwell Bankers location downtown. There's another drop-off in the Heights. Those donations will be given to Family Services, where food boxes will be created for furloughed workers. Well, the government shutdown isn't only impacting furloughed workers, but also local businesses who depend on those clients. Sarah's Mexican restaurant in downtown Billings has seen a decrease in customers since the shutdown began five weeks ago. At this time during the day, the restaurant is seeing its lunch rush and on a normal day. The owners say there's a line out the door. Now, today, the restaurant is quieter than usual. Luis Moran says since the shutdown, his business has dropped 40 to 50 percent. Usually uh, at this time, usually it's real busy and I notice uh, it's slower volume going on, but um, we're still hanging on and doing the best we can and doing more promotional stuff. and contact in uh, refineries and stuff like that and trying to in light of the loss in revenue Moran says he will probably need to step up advertising and social presence and offer customers deals on food to regain lost profits it is a moment months in the making for Yellowstone Valley Brewing the crowd is gathering and the beer is flowing as the brewery opens again after a complete renovation. The unveiling of the brewery's new look opened to the public starting at 4 p.m. today. The owners took over this past summer wanting to give a new look and breathe new life into the establishment. Back in December, they started brewing their flagship beer. Again, Black Widow Stout. The brewery has musical lineups scheduled for the next several months and now the public is welcome to enjoy its new look. There is still time to enjoy the opening. That celebration goes until the brewery closes tonight at 8 o'clock. Coming up on tonight's 530 News, legislators hitting the books to increase state funding for public schools. We'll find out those details. And Scott will join us a little later in sports. Stay with us. You're watching Q2 News at 530. You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.